That's Enough Out of You podcast is sponsored by Todd John's Law. Unfortunately, bad things happen to good people, whether it's the result of an auto accident caused by the carelessness of another driver or being charged with a crime. Dealing with the aftermath of a personal injury accident or being involved with the criminal justice system can be extremely difficult. That's why, whatever you're facing, you should never go it alone. You need an experienced attorney who will stand by you every step of the way. Todd is experienced, licensed, trusted, respected, and guaranteed. No one will work harder or more diligently on your behalf, and he will personally handle your case from beginning to end. Located on Drinker Street in Dunmore, Pennsylvania, Todd has been representing the legal rights of Scranton and Wilkesbury personal injury victims and those accused of a crime for over 20 years. At Todd John's Law, the utmost priority is ensuring that your rights are always protected and that your case is resolved as quickly and fairly as possible so that you can move on with your life. Call Todd John's Law at 570-876-6903. With Todd John's Law, you will receive equal justice under the law. All right, and welcome to That's Enough Out of You. I am your host, Bill Rader. And joining me is my co-host, Sean Kane. Sean, what's going on today? Billy Raids, how you doing, buddy? Oh, we're doing pretty good. Um, kind of a special episode today. We are, um, we're recording this a little bit, a little bit after uh, we recorded the actual interview. But um, this interview was pretty amazing, Sean. <laughs> oh, it was explosive, Billy. It was yeah. explosive. Uh, so uh, we are interviewing uh, Sirhan Sirhan's brother, and his name is Munir Sirhan. Uh, he uh, he lives in California uh, by himself, and um, he does not do a whole lot of interviews. So we uh, we thank Lisa Peace for setting this up for us. Lisa reached out to him and kind of assured him that uh, you know that we would take care of him, we'd be fair with him, and and um, and that's what we were. Sean it is pretty amazing. Well, yeah, yeah, that's the thing, Billy. I mean, he hasn't been treated fairly, and this is why he doesn't do a lot of media. Um, and, you know, Lisa was able to convince him to come on as long as she was on with us. Right. So she's on this interview as well. Um, and it was just amazing, Billy, to see how the family was treated, how Sirhan was treated. And then you see, disgusting, you really. know, it's disgusting. And and you see how Sirhan, the, nobody around him was serving his interests. Right. And all these all these lawyers, you know, they seem to be working for somebody else who had a agenda to make sure that Sirhan just pleaded guilty and none of the evidence that clears him would ever come out. And that's the that's the thing to understand, Billy. This is what I think people have a hard time understanding, because I've had people on social media come back to me and say, well, he was pointing a gun and he was doing this. And Lisa Pease proves in her book without a shadow of a doubt that Sirhan was firing blanks. Right. And he didn't shoot anybody, including the other victims that were hit. And yeah. he definitely, the autopsy proves that he did not kill RFK. The right. gunshot came at almost point blank range from behind. Well, Sirhan was several free feet in front. So again, and she goes through the whole thing with MK Ultra and the programmed assassin and uh, program Patsy, if you want to call it, you know. Um, and, and, you know, I did, anybody didn't read her book, you could get it at her bookstore. It's on there. Um, and read the books. It's very convincing. The evidence is overwhelming. And, you know, this interview was powerful, you know, and he talked about, you know, growing up as a kid in Palestine, Bill. And that was so interesting, you know, with everything going on there with Israel and Palestine now, you know, you just see, it was just unbelievable what he went through. And then, you know, to have this happen to the family and then the way they were treated, I mean, it was just really appalling, Billy. It really was appalling. It was criminal, and and you know, to to hear somebody who was there, who was involved in it, who was you know um, uh, impacted by it so personally and so you know immediately, it was just uh, what I mean. This was this was fantastic. We didn't know what to expect, Sean. We no, we didn't. 
We didn't we know didn't. what he was going to say, what he was going to tell us. He was very open with us, very honest, answered all of our questions. Anything Very we well know. spoken too, Billy. Absolutely. He really is. So uh, Munir Sirhan. Um, Sean, anything else before we get to the before we get to it? No, just you know, I I tell him in the interview at the end, I tell him, you know, that he has our respects and he he certainly does. And uh yep. you know, it's tragedy what happened to the family, but uh we're just glad that we could give him uh, you know, an outlet here to just tell his story and tell his family's story. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So uh without further ado, here is our interview with Munir Sirhan. <laughs> Munir, first of all, thank you for coming on. We really appreciate you doing this, sir. You're welcome, Sean. You're very, very welcome. Anything for Lisa. <laughs> Lisa is the best. I agree with that. Um, so, Munir, talk to us a little bit about um, when I look at this whole situation, I see how, you know, the, the Kennedy family suffered, but also your family has suffered as well. Um, and I look at it as two victims here, two families that were victimized by this, this tragedy. Uh, could you talk a little bit about how your family uh, was victimized by this whole thing? Yeah, the, the worst, uh, the worst uh, victimization was done by uh, by uh, Grant Cooper. And as uh, I hope as we go on with this uh, interview that I can uh, uh, relay the things that that guy is uh, the attorney, the lead attorney. Right. I wanted to get into that. Yeah, he uh, uh, he uh, he raped Sirhan for lack of a better statement. He uh, he we didn't appreciate him at all at all. He was recommended by uh, A. L. Weirin, uh, who was then the head of the uh, uh, Civil Liberties Union. Uh, the ACLU, yeah. ACLU. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Well, talk to what, me a little bit I... about that, Munir. Talk to me about how Grant Cooper treated you and your family. Well, the the the, the very first meeting with him. Uh, by the way, his office. Uh, I like it to describe to you where his office was located because the only reason okay. I mention that is uh, it was behind the gas station, and uh, in the old days, uh, uh, when you. Uh, go into a gas station, they had some sort of an air bell that, you know, if a car went over it, so that they would get service. Back then, you used to get, you know, your windshield washed and your car tires checked and all that. Uh, a, a bell would go off so that, you know, letting you know that someone is uh, needing service. And that bell would go off constantly, constantly. And uh, his office is, uh, it was behind uh, the, this gas station. And that bell was uh, was a nuisance because it would you know go off go off uh, frequently. But uh, anyway, he uh, he was sitting when we Adele and I were the ones that uh, first uh, uh, met with him, and uh, he had uh, three newspapers in front of him, and I believe they were the uh, the Los Angeles Mirror. I don't think it exists anymore. And another one, and I don't think this one exists any uh, either. The Herald Examiner, and the uh, the other one was the uh, Los Angeles Times. And uh, in his office, he had a whole bunch of uh, pictures of him uh, uh, fishing, you know, showing off his uh, catch on the pole. And he had his uh, I don't know what the technical term for those long boots that they wear when he was wading in the water. Uh, in any event, he had this big, big desk, and he was, uh, it was one of those uh, flip chairs. You know, if he went back too far, you know, the the, ch the chair might flip you. Uh, in any event, he, uh, the first thing he said was, uh, 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 Sirhan is guilty. All the papers say, say so. And uh, he took uh, each paper and threw it our way. Wow. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, he said, "The only thing we can do is uh, plead him guilty and uh, hope to save his life." Now, I, I can interject a lot of things that were going through my mind at the time. Sure. I don't know if you want to hear those, or you just want me to. Yes, no, go ahead. To... Go ahead, Mayor. Yeah. The uh, first off, I thought uh, when he showed us the papers, I'm saying to myself, hey, you know, I didn't know it. None of us knew anything about law. You know, we were we were still in diapers, all of us, as far as knowing the, 
you know, the the, the, the law or knowing much, much about America. We came here to make a new beginning because, you know, the upheaval in the uh, Middle East. But uh, I, I I thought it kind of funny that he was depending on uh, news newspaper reports as to the innocence or the guilt of Sirhan. Uh, secondly, uh, saving his life, it, it was... Uh, 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 it was uh, uh, assured, or, or it, was, it wasn't a sure bet, but uh, uh, within the uh, jur- 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 jurisprudence community, uh, I think that they were going to get rid of the, the, death, the death penalty anyway. So throwing that our way, you know, I thought was. Uh, you know, this was afterthought. And at the time, I, at the time, I didn't trust the guy. I really didn't. But uh, in, you know, as the years as the years went by, uh, why would he throw that at us? Uh, you know, that he was trying to save his life, or trying to save him from the gas chamber. When, like I say, the, the, that, that issue I think was going to be uh, put to rest by eliminating the death penalty amongst uh, you know judges and public and whatever the uh, the uh, the criminal uh, justice system would uh, uh, incur so that that was the uh, that was the the, the thing that uh, really uh, burnt me up when i you know it, when i progressed in the knowledge of uh, you know the, not not the law but uh, understanding what the hell is going on uh, right just just knowing what what a lawyer what a good lawyer should do, right? I mean, right. A, a, a defense yeah. lawyer is not going to judge his client. Uh, you know, they're not Shouldn't. going. To, most time, they don't even ask the client no. whether or not they did it. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So that that was the first uh, the f- the first uh, sign or two, and he uh, Adele and I uh, when uh, he said that we're going to plead him guilty. And try to save his life. Adele and I looked at that. We were stunned, and uh, and I think Adele must have had the same thoughts as I had when he threw the newspapers at us, because they supposedly had a, an investigator uh, looking at this thing by the name of McGowan. Uh, you know, I, I, I would suspect anybody with any decency would have the investigator there, you know, talking things over, or, you know, give us the pros and cons of. Uh, uh, his investigation, but uh, no way, hmm. no way. It was just Cooper uh, sitting there telling us that uh, the only thing we can do is plead him guilty and, and uh, uh, hope to save his life. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, d- during the uh, the uh, trial, uh, I, I believe before the trial, before the trial. I don't remember the exact. I'm doing this out of memory. If you guys will pardon me, but sure. I, I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm, my, my memory. My, my memory will uh, will serve me right. During the uh, during the trial itself, or just prior to the trial, my older brother. Uh, he's a little hot headed, but he's not really hot headed. You know, in the old country, the louder you yell. The uh, the uh, he was uh, you know old fashioned uh, old fashioned country style. The louder you yell, uh, you're under the impression that the, the stronger you feel about the point that you're trying to make. So he, uh, in so many words, he wrote him a letter, uh, uh, telling him that he's not, uh, uh, you know, he's not uh, pleased with uh, uh, with uh, with what he was uh, telling the family at uh, what Cooper was telling the family at the time. So Cooper took that as a threat, and uh, he notified the uh, uh, Pasadena Police Department that uh, this guy is making threat. Uh, uh, my older brother was making uh, threatening uh, remarks against them. So um, one of the days of the trial, uh, you know, we had the police here day and night, uh, you know, uh, guarding us. Uh, thank God nothing ever happened. But uh, nevertheless, they had, uh, you know, one officer, one officer in the front and one officer in the back. And uh, any time that uh, somebody came to the door, they would uh, ask us if we knew this person or if not, or did we want him in or did we, uh, did we not want him in? 
and a lot of times I didn't want, or we didn't want the people to go through the uh, the search uh, procedure that they, uh, you know, that they would impose on anybody who ever came in or out of the house. But uh, so I, 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 we were so uh, 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 we got claustrophobia, you know, sitting in the house, sitting in the house, sitting in the house. Sure. So uh, some evenings I would go out with an old buddy of mine. And just uh, drive around, and all of a sudden I see this big red sea of red lights behind me, and uh, it was uh, it, what seemed like the whole police department was pulling me over, and I thought that they were you know playing a joke on me because, I, I, you know, I, I, I've come to know all of them, you know, they they would they were here 24 hours a day, and I, and uh, you know I'd bring them out Pepsi's. Uh, uh, you know, I'd bring them out, uh, bring them out a TV to look at, because I, I can imagine, you know, how uh, monotonous the, uh, the, you know, the job was to them. Right. But in, in any event, I thought it was a joke, because you know, after all, I'm living with these guys. So uh, one of them said, uh, "All right, get out of the car, hands up," and I said, "All right, all right, all right," you know, jokingly, and. Uh, one of them grabs me by the neck and says, up against the wall, uh, put your hands on the car. And, I, you know, the, the way he grabbed me, I knew this was serious. And I said, the heck is going on here? And uh, like I say, there were red lights all over, all over. And luckily, one of the officers uh, knew me. And uh, he said, no, no, that's not the one that we're after. And... Um, Later, I found out that uh, Cooper had notified the uh, the uh, police that uh, that uh, he didn't feel safe uh, with the older brother, as he put it, making threats to him. If he knew my older brother, it wasn't a threat; it was just a strong letter that uh, you know that he didn't uh, uh, he didn't appreciate what Co- what Cooper was uh, saying and, and uh, the defense of uh, Cooper. Uh, I mean, I'm saying this to show you to what to what degree Cooper wanted to hang on to this case. Right. You know, whether whether he got good news or whether he got bad news, uh, Cooper wanted to hang on to this case for life. We later found out that uh, uh, he was uh, involved in some sort of a, uh, uh, a court uh, theft of some sort that he wasn't. He got hold of papers that he wasn't wasn't supposed to have, and. Uh, as a consequence, the I think they gave him just a, a, a slap on the arm for uh, by finding him a thousand dollars, and uh, I think that's why he wanted to stick close to the case. And we all came to the conclusion that, that uh, that's why he wanted to stick uh, closer to the case. In fact, Larry Teeter, one of his later attorneys, uh, came to that conclusion as well. Uh, th- during the uh, during the trial, uh, uh, the press outside was, uh, you know, we, we, we take breaks during, you know, an hour or two of uh, court hearings or court proceedings, and then the judge would call for a break, and, uh, you know, the, uh, the jury would be reprimand, uh, remanded uh, in their quarters, and the press would be outside in the press room where all the phones were and all that, and Cooper would be talking to the press people, and, you know, everybody was attentively uh, listening to him and making notes and what have you. And uh, Mother even noticed, you know, God bless her, God bless her, she was a good soul. Uh, Mother uh, would want to talk to Cooper, and he would just more or less shuck her aside. Wow. He wouldn't wouldn't give her the time of day. He wouldn't give her the time of day for anything. Hmm. So... uh, uh, yeah, I didn't appreciate that, but uh, what could I do? I'm just a little old. I don't know. I think I was 20, 21, 22 years old at the time. Right. But uh, now, I, didn't, I didn't appreciate Go ahead. No, I mean, I was just going to ask you a, a question about, now, did you, did you, um, did the family ever appeal or did, did Sirhan appeal uh, this uh, based on, you know, ineffective uh, assistance from uh, of counsel? 
I believe uh, uh, Mr. Teeter did, his later attorney, and uh, I believe Dr. Pepper, one of his later attorneys, did as well. Okay. Okay. They both did. And uh, no, obviously, uh, no, uh, no, you know. Uh, yeah, all of their briefs, uh, via briefs, and they all fell on uh, deaf ears. Hmm. Uh, to, to Mr. Teeter, the parole board used to say this isn't the forum for it. You have to go through, uh, you know, another legal route in order to do this. And uh, Dr. Pepper uh, uh, was saying that the judge we were in front of was the uh, the uh, gatekeeper to this, and they're not going to listen to us. And uh, uh, in other words, uh, th- their their take on this was that uh, this wasn't the forum to uh, to show. Uh, any uh, discrepancies during the uh, trial, or although it, uh, although I think, like I say, I'm not an attorney, but anything that happened during the trial can be discussed at the parole hearing, but the innocence or guilt, I, th- I guess, couldn't be discussed. That's right. the way I understand it. I may be wrong, but uh, yeah, they they uh, they did appeal. Okay. They did appeal. So, and uh, so did uh, Isaac. Uh, he had another attorney in the. In the meantime, uh, by the name of uh, no, God, three Isaac and Lawrence Peter are those names. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> so how yeah. many how many Go attorneys ahead, has how many attorneys has Sirhan had over the years? Let's see. Let me see if I can name them. There was the public defender. Uh, there was uh, there was a fellow by the name of Dean Jabara. There was a fellow by the name of uh, 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 George Shibley. There was an attorney by the name of uh, Grant Cooper, of course, Russell Parsons, uh, 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 Emil Zola Berman. There was uh, 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 Godfrey Isaacs. There was uh, Mr. Teeter. There was uh, Dr. Pepper. There was, uh, I may have forgotten uh, one or two. No, I That's think okay. the. Uh, Several, represent- obviously. Yeah, it was- yeah. The one who represented him when he did that so- so called confession in the 80s on that show, the David Frost interview, the name of that attorney, Munir. Yeah, Luke McKissick. Yeah. Luke McKissick. Oh, by the way, Luke McKissick uh, shouldn't have even been involved in this case because his wife worked for the DA. Yeah, I know Sean has some Sean has some questions about that, right, John? Yeah, so he uh that was it was that the TV special in 1984 McKissick he he had Sirhan confess at his advice is that what that Well, that, I I don't know if you'd call it a confession, but the, it was scripted. It was scripted by by uh uh by uh uh, uh, TV personality, right? Uh, uh, O'Reilly, I believe O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly, Bill Riley. Or I think it was either O'Reilly or Riley. Their hand kicked off two programs. I think it was a uh, sixty minutes, and uh, and uh, uh, Inside Edition. And, and Robert. Uh, Robert Blair Kaiser, his his wife worked for the DA's office while uh, Kaiser was serving no, no, no. on Sirhan's defense team. Correct? No, yeah, but uh, 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 it wasn't. No, 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 it wasn't uh, Kaiser. It was McKissick. Okay. Okay. Luke McKissick. Okay, McKissick. McKissick. Oh, that's was, a conflict uh, of interest, though. Dear God. That's what I'm told. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Luke McKissick was uh, his wife worked for the DA. Yeah. I don't know in what capacity, but uh, she worked yeah, but, for him. Wow. So, uh, so when you're talk to me a little bit, obviously Grant Cooper and, and McKissick, these guys weren't acting in Sirhan's interest, but uh, talk to me about some of the other forces that were around Sirhan that, that were not acting in his best interest and they should have been. <laughs> Nobody was acting in Sirhan's interest. Nobody. Right. Look at the distance. Take, for example, the district attorneys. There was one district attorney, John D. Vandekamp, who was trying to make, who, uh, who was, I think, trying to run for attorney general. 
he used Sirhan as a stepping stone. Uh, there was another attorney, uh, Vandekamp, uh, by the way, felt that Sirhan was guilty. There was another attorney by the name of uh, Bugliosi that uh, uh, that ran yeah. on the premise that reopened the Sirhan case. Uh, 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 Reagan said that they would free Sirhan uh, when he was uh, governor of California. Yet, uh, you know, other governors of California refused to, to free Sirhan. I mean, uh, uh, you want to talk about a, a, a football? Sirhan has been uh, thrown around all over the place with, without him being heard. In fact, during the trial, he tried to get rid of Cooper, and at the time, I guess the ju- uh, the the, uh, the uh, the court system allowed the judge to do that, but uh, he wouldn't let him fire his attorney because he was so uh, disgusted with uh, Cooper, Cooper's defense. And Cooper was uh, was uh, uh, Cooper uh, was uh, working uh, hand in hand with uh, Kaiser because uh, Cooper's wife liked Kaiser's book about the Pope. But uh, Kaiser's main interest in this, and I think somebody, I haven't read the book, his book, but uh, somebody was telling me that uh, he admits in the book that he he was in this thing for the money, and he kept reiterating to the family that Cooper will not enter this case without me having the rights to the book. So he kept uh, pounding that into our head and pounding that into our head. And the only reason I think that he, he, he even mentioned it, or his wife, or Cooper mentioned that uh, his wife liked Cooper. I mean, liked uh, liked Kaiser because of his book about the uh, Pope. And incidentally, a few years later, uh, Kaiser is writing a, an article for Penthouse about being a sex surrogate, which I thought was uh, <laughs> so mm-hmm. ironic. Uh, yeah, does that? Uh, there was nobody really working in Sirhan's interest through this whole thing. I think. Right. In earnest, uh, I think I, uh, Isaacs tried, but uh, there was a fight between him and uh, McKissick, uh, as, uh, who, who, who was to uh, uh, to, to uh, present this thing in the California Supreme Court. I guess that's the icing on the cake for any attorney to appear in front of the uh, the uh, California justices, and they ended up splitting the. Uh, Whatever time was allotted for that, they ended up, they ended up splitting the time, for, you know, for, for their speaking on on the issue. Right. But and then Cooper, Cooper, uh, for some odd reason, w- w- was uh, uh, very pleased with uh, Luke as an attorney. Mm. Very, very pleased. And then uh, one other point I'd like to make about Cooper and and Parsons. Uh, uh, when the trial was over with, uh, Cooper and Parsons went up to see Sirhan, and uh, they were trying to save their pride in front of Sirhan. And Sirhan ex- said to me that, uh, uh, in unison, they, they as, uh, you know, they started to cry. And, uh, Sir, you know, Sirhan was, uh, <laughs> here you are, you rail- railroaded me into a prison, and, uh, you know, he's... Feet away from the, the the gas chamber, and you're worried about your pride, and you're crying to me. Wow! I mean, they really put the icing on the cake when uh, when they did that to Sirhan. And uh, Cooper, when he came to the house, he came to the house with his wife, and uh, he didn't. Uh, he, he didn't. I mean, you know, he apologized for not doing uh, for not doing more. But uh, and then in later years, uh, Cooper. Uh, you know, after uh, after after the trial, uh, uh, Cooper uh, during the trial stipulated to everything, everything and anything that the district attorney wanted, and uh, there was a lot of things that uh, Cooper should have, uh, you know, should have uh, rebutted a lot, a lot, a lot, numerous, numerous things that Cooper should have rebutted. Uh, the one that. Uh, Numerous points, numerous points on a lot, a lot of issues that Cooper should have reject, uh, objected to, but uh, uh, he, uh, you know, he, st- he stipulated to all that the uh, DA, all three DAs, uh, 
had to offer. And, uh, and, uh, we, we, you know, m- mom used to talk to him during the breaks or try to talk to him th- during the breaks, but he would never give her a chance. Uh, you know, he, he always uh, thought, you know, he, uh, he, uh, he, uh, he didn't have, it's his mother, you know, I'm thinking that's his mother. That's my brother. What are you, why are you shoving my mother away? Right. right. You know, he was busy with the. Uh, I'll tell you one ironic thing I recall about the trial itself, when uh, when uh, the psychiatrist uh, Martin Shore, apparently he had uh, politicized the, the whole of his report, or, or a good portion of it, and he was uh, and Cooper while, t- while talking to the uh, the press in the uh, during the breaks of the uh, court, would uh, was saying. Uh, oh, the, the psychiatrist will do this, and the psychiatrist will do that. And you know, once we get the psychiatrist to uh, uh, agree on these issues, and uh, and prior to that, we need money, we need money, and we need money. And uh, that's another story. But uh, all of the psychiatrists were doing it uh, pro bono. But uh, I think it was uh, Fitz, either Fitz or Howard. That, uh, that, uh, that 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 you know brought out the fact that uh, Shore had uh, plagiarized a lot of his work, and uh, Tom Brokoff, I remember him coming out to, to the uh, out of the courtroom. I mean, he had his jaw wide open, and he looked at Mom and I, and uh, especially after Cooper was always talking about the psychiatrist, the psychiatrist. And the the uh, the uh, the uh, the, uh, the press uh, around Cooper started to you know uh, uh, thin out, but uh, still he had uh, Cooper had them all in the uh, palms of his hand. But I I'll never forget uh, Tom Brokaw's face after the uh, after Shore was uh, was uh, raped by by the prosecution about his uh, report about Sirhan. Minure, let's let's uh, change directions for a little bit here. I I want to, if you could talk a little bit about, um, tell us a little bit about your brother Sirhan. Uh, talk about what he what he was like as a person, and then I like to get your experience uh, about your life in Palestine and what led you to come to the United States. Yeah, uh, Sirhan was a very congenial guy, man. Very you know, to whoever met him. You know, he didn't. Uh, he, uh, I guess you could call him old school. He didn't like uh, women to be, uh, you know, show off their bodies and, you know, bathing suits and, uh, you know, in public and that. He thought that that was uh, we, well. We all do in the Middle East. You don't do that. You don't walk around with your, you know, a woman showing her uh, her wares, especially uh, in a bikini. You, you know, you. Uh, we were like uh, America was in the. You know, in the twenties, you know, the, uh, ankle uh, ankle dresses, and you know, pretty con- very very conservative in that respect. But uh, other than that, he would, uh, you know, he was uh, he was a uh, he was a nice guy. He was a very uh, anyone who knew him uh, spoke highly, very highly of him. Uh, he was studious. You know, he was uh, at one time he wanted to become a, a UN interpreter, so uh, he had a few languages under his belt. And uh, uh, incidentally, when you're living in the Middle East, because of all, all of the uh, the uh, various uh, 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 nationalities that visit the, the Middle East because of its uh, you know religious uh, 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 importance, uh, uh, you'd get people speaking all sorts of languages, and uh, you know at the age of seven or eight. You see a lot of kids that uh, under, you know speak numerous uh, numerous languages, you know French, uh, German, what, whatever uh, uh, whatever language uh, uh, we, they, they would they would pick it up from the uh, from the uh, from the visitors, and uh, so Sirhan thought that he would complete his uh, his. Uh, uh, language uh, portfolio here in, in, in the States. And like, I, like I said, to become, he wanted that one time. His aspiration was to become a, a UN interpreter. 
uh, uh, but uh, as far as his persona, he's a heck of a nice guy. You know, you, he may have gotten, uh, he may get a, a report or two about uh, women uh, showing showing too much, uh, uh, you know, t- too much of their body. But uh, other than that, uh, he, he was a, he was he was a, you know your friend's friend. He was a he was a good guy. He was a good guy. He wouldn't hurt a fly. I've, I've said this before, but uh, literally, he wouldn't hurt a fly. He right. would uh, a fly would come in the door. He would uh, rather than kill it, he'd, he'd open the door and you know try, try to shoo it out the door. Uh, yeah. He. Uh, you know, he revered life. He revered. Uh, he was, he was an all right guy. Uh, he and I had a little spat one time, but uh, you know that was, uh, you know, f- was uh, how should I say, it? civil, civil uh, rivalry over a cup of tea. I was in a hurry to get to work, and I had to take the bus. You know, if he missed those buses, he got to wait another twenty minutes, sometimes a half hour, to catch another one. Right. I wanted my. T- who were all tea drinkers in the Middle East, and uh, he took my hot water. I had to wait for the hot water to reboil. <laughs> but uh, other than that, we never. Uh, you know, we had our. He, I think he had his differences with his older brothers, but uh, they were they were trying to impose. Uh, you know, their the, the, the different mindset between the old and the new. You know, here you had more freedoms over there. The you know, the older brother, more or less, when the father was in here, was uh, responsible. And, uh, they, they, you know, they used to have uh, uh, not, nothing serious, but they used to, uh, uh, you know, get, uh, you know, they'd have a spat or two. Well, but, we, uh, we, very we, nice both guy. Brothers, we both have brothers, Munir. We, we know how that goes. Yeah, we know how that goes. <laughs> Munir, do you do you ever get to visit him? Yeah, yeah. One of the visits, I, would, I have to tell you about this one. Sure. <laughs> yeah, we. I, I, yeah, it was uh, a lot of it was tearful, especially when we first saw him uh, up in uh, San Quentin. You know, they had him shackled uh, around his waist. They had uh, they had uh, shackles from his. Uh, his feet to his, you know, to, to, to the waist the waistband and his hands together and another uh, another chain uh, another chain from uh, there to to his waist again and uh, that was that was horrible. But the first time we met him, uh, this was another thing too that uh, 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 Russell and, and Parsons uh, I didn't appreciate about them. Uh, when we went to see Sirhan during the trial, and even before the trial, uh, we were told, uh, Parsons told us we can't speak Arabic. Uh, we have to speak English. Mm. And then uh, they would uh, run a metal detector over Mom and over me. Now, you know, being knowledgeable about the law or not, or you know, pro-police or anti-police, I thought that was, uh, you know, I didn't think that was right at all. So you're, you're, you're running a Geiger counter, or not a Geiger counter, but a, a metal detector over my mother. And Parsons, they didn't run one over Parsons. And uh, I thought that that was kind of weird, very, wow. very weird. And uh, so anyway, the first time we went up there, it was Mother and I and Parsons. And... Uh, uh, it was a very, very gloomy, gloomy cell. There were uh, there were two uh, after they after they uh, they frisked us with the uh, metal detector and all that. Uh, they took us upstairs. I think there were initially four officers, uh, and then uh, into another room where there were two officers, and then into uh, Sirhan's cell, which was. Uh, uh, in a room, and then bars within a room, and uh, it was uh, it, it, it was just a, a room and the bars. But when we came in, they put uh, heavy tarps over the 
over the bars. I think the bars uh, were. Uh, I think they were t- t- uh, two sides of the cell had bars on them. So they would uh, they would put. Uh, I don't know if they were bulletproof or. Uh, you know, I don't know if the, they thought that somebody may shoot at Sirhan through the windows or or what. But in any event, when we first saw him, uh, he, his uh, his face his face was uh, he, he looked like he was in pain. And we asked him what was wrong, and he said that uh, his leg was hurting him. And I guess that was due to the scuffle in the uh, in the ambassador room. And then we asked him, uh, what, you know, what happened. He says he does He didn't remember. And uh, mother asked him again, uh, and she asked him once in English. She asked him once in Arabic. And Russell says, "No, you're not allowed to speak. You're not allowed to speak Arabic." So uh, later on, incidentally, later on that day, there was a gal that, uh, by the name of Lynn Mangan, who ended up to be his. Uh, uh, lead uh, invest uh, lead uh, researcher, and uh, she mentioned to us that uh, uh, Parsons can't tell you what language to speak or not to speak while talking to your brother. And she was livid about it. She said, "They that, that that's something that I, you know, that shouldn't be done, or, or you know, I don't know why he did it." Mm-hmm. And then uh, the talking, talking about Parsons, Ian McGowan. Uh, before, this was before. Uh, before uh, Cooper stepped in, we're, we're uh, trying to uh, 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 gather money from the Arabs. The, uh, McGowan kept saying, we need monies. In fact, that's the first time I ever heard the, the word money used plural. Mm. Monies, monies, monies. So they tried to... Uh, you know, get to, get in touch with the Arab world, and I guess the best they could do was get the uh, Palestinian representative uh, in, the, in Washington D.C. They didn't have a uh, uh, counselor there. He was just a, a, I guess, a figurehead for the Palestinians. They got him, and they got uh, the, another fellow by the name of uh, uh, Sarkis. And they had him sit at the uh, defense table, but you know later on they were dismissed by the uh, judge. Uh, the judge said, "I'm not going to turn this thing into an Arab Israeli uh, conflict," but he dismissed them. He dismissed. Uh, and I, and I, I don't know if uh, McGowan or Parsons ever, uh, you know, if they were ever successful in getting any money from the Arabs. Uh, and then finally, uh, you know, the in, in walks uh, uh, Kaiser, and uh, he, he sets up some sort of a deal with, uh, I believe it was Life magazine, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, and uh, Cooper that, uh, was always hollering for money and money. And at the end of the trial, rather than give the uh, money, there was a lot of money left over, a lot of money left over. Everybody, in, in the, as far as the defense uh, strategy was uh, being used, did everything pro bono. I don't know why, you know, why they kept saying money, money, money. Anyway, at the end of it, after Sirhan was, uh, uh, you know, thanks to Cooper, sent up to uh, San Quentin at the, death, the, uh, to, to the uh, gas chamber, uh, knowing that Sirhan still had a very, very uphill well, to get out, he he donates his money to some some foundation that either he or his wife uh, like, instead of leaving it in an, in some sort of an account, you know, for Sirhan's defense. Wow, which is very 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 weird. And uh, uh, McGowan and his uh, his associates during the break of the, uh, in the during the breaks in the courtroom. Uh, you know, he's, uh, McGowan would walk around. Look at these pair of pants; I, they fit my jacket. I got them at J.C. Penney's for eight bucks. You know, they're trying to promote uh, the business uh, in front of all the pressmen. You know, so they're trying to promote business for themselves. Uh, and, uh, 
I, I, I don't know where to begin or where to start or how to... <laughs> well, Munir, why don't you talk about a little bit about your life in Palestine and what drove you to come to the United States? It, it was hectic, guy. It was hectic. Uh, I'd like to start that off with uh, Mother uh, making a trip to the United Nations. If I might, just may make one thing clear here. When, when uh, Cooper had the case... Mm-hmm. We all thought that Sirhan did it, you know, for, from Cooper's uh, big mouth. Uh, he, nope. he didn't know what he was talking about at the time. But after Cooper, or after the case, uh, people started questioning, you know, the reality of the trial. And uh, there was there was a lot, a lot of questions. In fact, one of the jurors during uh, Sirhan's trial had said that had we known all these things at the trial, I, for one, wouldn't have voted for Sirhan's guilt. Uh, for an example, things that uh, I believe his name was uh, Theodore Chirac. Uh, uh, he, there, there was a lot of people that never placed Sirhan within, the, uh, you know, the, the shooting range of his. Uh, not not within the shooting range, but uh, close enough to Sirhan for the. Uh, for the ballistics to to match or jive, and uh, you know we found that out later. And later, Cooper says, "Well, had he known these things?" And I think we have an affidavit from him floating around somewhere. Had he known these things at the time of trial, he would have directed the trial differently. Well, that was his job. You, sure, son of a. That was you know that's that's what you should have done initially. M- but, Munir, uh, did, yeah, he, did you and, and your family believe he was guilty at that point? No, no. Okay. okay. Oh no, no, no. Well, you, you know, you uh, we didn't believe it. We didn't even. No, we didn't. But we were all in shock. No. Sure, sure. No, but after you get it, after you get it pounded to you, especially with, you know, somebody, uh, an attorney, and he's a famous attorney, and he's, uh, you know, you're in court and all that, you start to, you know, to, to, to double guess you, you know, the. But no, no. We even during the trial, we uh, my mother uh, kept saying, "I don't believe this. My son didn't shoot, didn't right. shoot uh, Bobby." But after you hear so much, you know, don't forget this came in like like a a, a, a blast of air in our face. I mean, right. a huge blast of air. Of course, it, it, it's not like uh, you know uh, eating a, a sour lemon and you know. Uh, reacting to it i mean this was this was so bitter this was so bitter initially uh, you know uh, uh, our thought processes everything was uh was uh, uh <laughs> we didn't have any we didn't have any thoughts we didn't have any uh, we were mesmerized we were uh, no 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 we well, didn't must know have, anyway you must have been heartbroken i mean not you know not only is this you know, horrible thing well, happening to your brother, but it's it's a it's a you know national story. I mean, it's a, it's you know a worldwide story, and and yeah, your family hit is at the heart of it. Yeah, it didn't hit home with me. I didn't begin to question things until seventy uh, four. You know, when reality finally set, set set in. You know, I said, "Whoa, wait a minute!" And, you know, I started to question here and there, and then I found out that, you know, started to answer my own questions and, uh, you know, f- found out the hard way instead of a- trying to ask somebody else uh, what was going on. It finally hit me, and when it hit me, my God, I had a heck of a time trying to, I'd say, you son of a Cooper and you son of a Parson, you son of a, what the hell are you guys doing? What would you do to my brother? Right. Uh, yeah, there was a lot, a lot to consume at the time, and it was... Uh, you know, and 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 during the trial, what got me most is that the judge wanted to make sure that the public was aware of. Uh, after all, this was a historical case, and wanted to make sure that the public was aware. Hell, the 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 the, the, the trial itself was was a farce in comparison to what what went on outside the 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 court or outside the trial. The, the, the trial itself was a farce. The whole right. thing was a farce. You know, for, for everybody involved, the ballistics people during the, uh, you know, the trial, the the the, 
the DA, the uh, everybody, the the, the uh, even the uh, the psychiatrist for the, uh, the prosecution uh, hoodwinked the uh, uh, Cooper by telling him, "Oh yeah, I agree with the rest of the psychiatrists." And when he was on the stand, he uh, he, uh, he he. Uh, he took back, he went back a few steps and didn't agree. You know, he changed, he changed his mind when he, uh, when the, uh, when he was on the stand, uh, supposedly for the, for the prosecution in, uh, Sarhan's case. There wasn't anything that went right during that, uh, during that trial. And I, I, and if you look closely enough at this whole thing, you'll see that Cooper, uh, Cooper was, uh, heavily involved in it. Really, really heavily Really, really, and, and uh, he, excuse me, he, uh, he blew it. He blew it, and all to right. save his own neck. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Munir, I just want to know a little bit more about you know your life in Palestine and and what it was like over there and well, and why you to, came to, to the United e States. To that effect, if I can just uh, elaborate on a couple of points here, mother, mm -hmm. mother, and I. Uh, uh, went to the United Nations. Uh, <clears throat> Mother remembers this. Uh, in fact, I have a copy of her uh, statement that she tried to submit to the UN. She remembers a family with a little boy named Fuad, and uh, we were trying to hope to hope we were hoping to get an audience with uh, the then head of the uh, United Nations, Usant. Uh, he was abroad somewhere, and we didn't uh, we weren't aware of it. So uh, we traveled from uh, California to uh, New York, and uh, <clears throat> we got a small audience with uh, the undersecretary. I think it was, his name was uh, Stravopoulos. And, uh, you know, we got the bad news that we made all that, that whole trip for nothing. And uh, we, we only got to chat briefly, maybe five, ten minute uh, chat with the Stravopoulos. And the only take away from and mother had given him a that uh, she was thinking that uh, if I can't, can't get an audience, then maybe I can you know Xerox a few uh, 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 her uh, I wouldn't say speech but a few things that were on my mind on her mind and uh, they could distribute it among the uh, various UN members uh, and it, it spoke of. Uh, a fellow named Fouad who had lost his mother and father during all the skirmishes or, or, or wars that, would, that, that, that she recalls uh, being over there in the Middle East. And life over there was pure hell, guy. Pure hell. What can I tell you? There, uh, I, I, uh, there was a fellow that I used to know. Uh, we used to be school buddies. Uh, uh, went over to knock on his door. Let's go to school, and uh, there was no explanation, no nothing. He's not going to school today. He wouldn't find out that he was blown up or de dead because of a bomb. Mm. So two, three weeks later, and then uh, you know tears would start, and you know you very hard felt, especially when you're a youngster. He would be walking down the street. There'd be gouges in the uh, in the pavement. There were bo uh, bombs the previous night had. Uh, you know, wow. dug up the streets. Uh, there'd be, uh, 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 I remember one time uh, looking in, inside of a well and finding uh, what, what, I, I, what I couldn't believe at the time. I didn't know what they were, but later later uh, 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 found out that they were body parts in the well. Uh, hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, you know... Uh, you weren't left alone. Uh, you were always uh, with an adult going to and from school, uh, uh, and then the air raid sirens would. Uh, you never knew when they were going to come. Uh, you know, come. And, uh, bombs were the scariest thing. You know, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, horrific, horrific. The sounds of the bombs and the, and the uh, you know the, the, the screaming children. And one time. Uh, I remember, I think uh, I mentioned this uh, previously to somebody else. There was, the air raid sirens went off, and uh, we all into uh, we all ran into, uh, or the neighborhood ran into a, uh, a bomb shelter, or, uh, 
makeshift bomb shelter. And uh, God forbid that didn't hit. You know, in later years I was thinking about that. If, that, if a bomb had hit that building, we would have been buried in rubble. But uh, inside uh, this, uh, this uh, building, which was incidentally bombed previously, there was a big boulder. And uh, everybody, uh, the women and children, would be screaming and hollering. And uh, I mean, it was horrible. It was horrible. Then, uh, you know, after things, uh, after the bombs uh, bought, dropped off their their loads, and you know, we'd come out. But uh, everybody, everybody was terrified. Terrified. Uh, hmm. There were times when. Uh, you know, and, and nobody was certain when they would start back up again. Uh, uh, you know, and then the, you wouldn't get any sleep. Sleep was very, very hard. You'd hear, I'd hear children crying all night long, for, you know, because of the fear and the, the terror of the bombs and the, the sounds of the bombs. And it was horrible. It was horrible. And I think uh, that during the trial itself, uh, they uh, they discussed... Uh, uh, Sirhan, I think Sirhan, he himself, even and one of his uh, uh, old, uh, one of our old neighbors, even discusses some of the things that uh, that he remembered uh, that used to happen over there. Wow. Um, yeah, it was let, horrific. Let, horrific. Let's talk about um, Minir. When when Sirhan was arrested, what was the uh, your neighbors' reactions? What was the neighbors' reactions to it? Uh, everybody was, uh, you know, t t uh, you know, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? Can we do anything for you? But, uh, m mother used to tell him that, uh, there's nothing. We weren't here immediately afterwards. We were secluded. Uh, one of, um, right. uh, in fact, several of mother's, uh, friends at the church, uh, one of them put us up in her, uh, in her one of her apartments or one of the church's apartments in the back in the back of one of the homes but when we came back home the neighbors couldn't do enough for us you know do you need anything do you need cooking do you need uh you know running to the grocery store you need uh in fact one of the neighbors is so kind he he mowed the lawn for us wow no. i can't i can't even imagine what you guys must have been going through. I mean, it just must have been a, a nightmare. You know, uh, I, I just can't even imagine it. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was more than a nightmare. I'm telling you, when I when I woke up, so to speak, in 1974, you know, everything came at one time. Right. You know, here I'm a little kid that uh, didn't know anything from anything, and then when it all hit. It was so hard to decipher. My God, I said, is this what this world is all about? And I was in the center of it, and I was in the, what the heck is going on in this world? I, I don't know. I guess I might, might refer to it. My, my innocence flew out, flew out the door. Because it and wasn't. Did you, uh, did you feel at that time powerless to, to do anything? Or did you feel like, hey, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to start looking into this no, and, no, and I, advocate I, for my I, brother? I, Powerless and a, and a sucker, hmm. a sucker. You know, yeah. here, here, uh, here, I uh, just a fun-loving kid. And everybody used to like me too. You know, you know, they kids would love uh, to have me come over and you know uh, befriend their uh, their kids. And you know, I had a few uh, unintentional things happen to me, uh, but uh, they weren't purposefully. Uh, I was just a kid. I was just a kid, inquisitive about my uh, my yard, my neighborhood, and you know, stumbled uh, stumbled across a few things that I shouldn't have, but uh, not intentionally, not to do anybody any harm. Sure. But uh, yeah, yeah, when it, uh, like I say, when it when it when it was a it was more than a sledgehammer in my head. And when I wait a minute, wait a minute, and then when I started to thinking about things, I said, wait a minute, this can't be, man. Another, they can't do this to my brother, uh, let alone, uh, you know, another human being and my brother. And why my brother? Why my brother? Sure. Now, Munir, with the with the gun purchase, um, 
I understand the LAPD tried to say that, that you bought the gun. Is that correct? That was yeah, Hank Hernandez, I believe. I th- yeah, yeah. I, th- I, th- I think that was my mistake. I w- they left me with the impression. They, were, uh, they put me on the lie detector test under the pretense that I was lying. I wasn't lying. But like I say, when this thing hit, it hit. Right. It, it, uh, I mean, you. Uh, I don't care who you were. You were discombobulated mentally, physically, and whatever. I may have made a, a mistake in replying to one of Hernandez's questions. Uh, in fact, it wouldn't have been a mistake. Uh, maybe I was thinking Arabic and it came out uh, English and, you know, got lost in the, uh, 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 I shouldn't say interpretation, but uh, the ver- verbalization. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, when I was, uh, uh, he left me with the impression that uh, I was lying, that I had bought the gun. Uh, but I, uh, I've been told I've been mistaken and uh, that uh, Hernandez, either either that or they eliminated uh, that part from the uh, interview. But uh, well, can you tell me about Hernandez, how he treated you? Uh, he, uh, you know, they asked me a few questions and then they would ask me the questions again. But I, well, I noticed while talking to him, there was, uh, you know, other than the, uh, than the than the lie detector machine, and uh, had I known that that was a lie detector machine, uh, I wouldn't have gotten on it. But they they they, they said that they want me to, uh, they were going to put me on this machine. I don't recall his reasoning for it, but uh, hmm. you know, I was willing to. I, I don't want to say cooperate, but he was an adult and I was a child, and I was willing to do what I was told. Uh, d- during the questioning. Uh, I noticed, uh, I believe uh, his name was Howard, the one with the glasses, one of the prosecutors that wore glasses. And I think uh, Howard was the only one. Uh, they had a, a window, uh, a, 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 not now I know it's a two-way window. I didn't know it before. But he was very, very, uh, when he got very close to the window, I could see him through the window. And I'm wondering, well, while Hernandez is asking me these questions, he was looking at me through the window, and I could see his head and his shoulders at that window looking at me. And uh, that not only distracted me, but I'm wondering, why is he, what's he doing out there? Why doesn't he come in? But, uh, yeah, I was, I was uh, you know, it didn't bother Hernandez. He just kept on asking me the questions. Mm. Uh but uh, I didn't. I, I didn't even like Hernandez's uh, line of questioning. He, uh, right? Yeah, he told me they caught me in a lie about somebody uh, coming in the home, and I said, you know, m- mother and the whole family had an open door policy. You know, if you wanted to come in our home, come on, you're welcome. Anybody, anybody right. may have made a mistake by, you know, saying that uh, this guy was there or that guy was there, and they weren't. But it wasn't intentional. I wasn't trying to hide anything, but. You know, having that open door policy, they may may or may not have been at the house, and uh, I think that's what he. I, I I assume that that's what he was talking about when they said that uh, I was lying. Lisa, do you want to? I'm sorry, Minier. Go ahead. I, I do remember him saying that uh, I, I bought the gun, and I insisted that I did not buy the gun. Right. Lisa, do you want to interject here and just tell our listeners, you know, who Hank Hernandez is and, and, you know, his role in this whole thing? Yes, Hank Hernandez was one of the two people in charge of the conspiracy angle in the investigation of the assassination, the other being Manny Pena. Both Hernandez and Pena had strong ties to CIA-backed organizations, and it, it appeared both of them had actually worked for the CIA prior to this. And there's definitely, as I read through the files, they were absolutely trying, they knew it was a conspiracy. They they were very clear that it was a conspiracy. That's clear in their files. But they didn't want to blame anybody but the Sirhan family. So if they could loop in another brother like Munir or somebody, I mean, they were really desperately trying, they tried to get witnesses to identify photos of the other brothers 
as co-conspirators. And of course, the problem is they weren't. None of them were there and no one identified their photos. No one fell for the gambit, basically. That's so, right. If I may interject here. Sure. One, one of the members of the, uh, the, the, the team, the, uh, uh, what did they call the dream team, uh, uh, Lisa? The nightmare team? What? <laughs> no. Special unit senator. Oh, oh special, special unit senator, unit. yeah. They, uh, two two of their members came by the house. I think one of the one of the no, n- members was uh, named uh, Sanders, Sanders or Saunders. I don't. And the other one I don't remember his name. But they were trying to get us in a lineup because somebody had identified us being uh, uh, I don't know at a gun shop or at a gun range or something. But I told them no. I was working at the time. I, I you know and I, the people that. Uh, that I was working with would vouch that I was working, but they insisted, they they over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, you know, come down, you know, would you take a line, uh, would you be in the lineup? And, and finally, Adele and I, you know, we've cooperated to these, not co- I shouldn't say cooperated, uh, we, we, uh, we did what these people did, wanted us to do. I mean, we didn't, you know, here we are. We're not trying to hide anything. We're not. Uh, we're telling you the truth. We're, and these guys kept insisting and insisting. And finally, you know, Adele looks over at me, and I look over at him. He says, "Do you want to?" And I said, "No. Enough is enough. I don't want to go. Uh, you know, I've given them all I know, and I've given them. Uh, I've been in a hospital, hospitable as much as I could be. And uh, and then I told them too that." Uh, uh, the, the FBI, when I tried to talk to the FBI agent on the initial uh, contact with them, the, the guy was trying to insist that I gave him permission to come into the house. I did not at any time ever give any uh, 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 off, uh, any government agent, uh, no matter what it was, a, a police officer or FBI or CIA, permission to come into the house. But... He twisted things around, and you know, as I found out later, to make it sound like I gave him permission. I gave no officer any permission to come into my home, and and I, I was really hurt by that because I, I said he lied. I did not give him permission to to uh, co- to come into my house. The way he placed it, he played a he, tricky, tricky. I'm a 21 year old kid, don't know jack shit. Mm. Pardon the expression. Yeah, he's he's telling me that. If Adele, if I told him that Adele is the one that would be, uh, Adele is the head of the household, he would be the one to, uh, that would uh, uh, give you, be able to give you permission to come into the house. Right. Then he says to me, well, if if Adele, uh, if Adele allows it, will you allow it? Now, to, to him, I guess, the way he, it was an FBI agent, to him, if that's giving permission, he uses a lot of trickery to to, to 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 make it sound like I give him permission to come into the house. I never said yes. You may go, go into my house and search it. Never, mm-hmm. never. But they, mm-hmm. they they twist things around in their own, you know, legal uh, legal legal mumbo jumbo to make it sound like I gave him permission right. to come into the house, and I never did. Go ahead, uh, Lisa. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's all right. We really want to hear you speak. So go ahead. <laughs> More questions. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have a, a couple more questions for for you, uh, Munir, if, if that's okay. I know we, we've kept you a, a while, but I, we could probably oh. keep you here for, for three hours if that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so many yeah. questions for you. But, but I know I'll be respectful of your time. Um, uh, a question. I hope I just hope I'm making sense through all this. Because, Absolutely, so this is this is wonderful. 50 years, Fifty-five years of uh, there's a lot of things I can interject in the, you know, between the cracks here. But the, the, like you say, that would take it would take more than three hours. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, obviously, you know, Lisa has been has been a, a fantastic advocate for for Sirhan uh, over the years. Um, someone else who, who has been an advocate and, and, you know, I know, uh, recently he's been in the news quite a bit, but, um, you know, Bob, uh, Bobby Jr. has also, uh, you know, I've heard him speak many times about, uh, Sir Hen's, uh, innocence in this. Have, have you ever met him? 
No, no, I've spoken to him over the phone briefly a couple of times. Okay. But I haven't met him yet. I hope to. I hope to soon. He, he sounds like a, and, and Sarah has, has nothing but praise for the guy. Yeah. He says that he's, a, he's an understanding guy, uh, and uh, he uh, he's truthful. He's uh, uh, knowledgeable about a lot of things, and uh, you know. But I, I've never met him. I've never met him. No, except one time we, uh, we uh, I think uh, one time we mentioned, and, and I won't forget it. Uh, we have to do a lot of praying, which mm. which, uh, which I took to heart. Sure, sure. Um, another question I have for you, uh, uh, Munir, is about uh, Gavin Newsom, and and obviously, um, you know, Sirhan, uh, the parole board, you know, recommended him for parole, and and Gavin Newsom, uh, governor of California, denied that. Um, I, I I'd like to get your feelings, especially since you know there's a pretty good chance he could be the the candidate for president in in, in the not in this coming election, but in the following election, 2028. What are your thoughts uh, regarding Gavin Newsom? Uh, I have to widen the scope a little bit here. Uh, is it Don? Uh, Bill, it's Bill. Oh, Bill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, okay. Throughout the years, uh, Bill, th- there's been people on both sides of the fence. Like I said, uh, when Reagan was president, he had no trouble with uh, releasing Sirhan. Mm-hmm. Newtson is in there, and he's got trouble releasing Sirhan. And for the oddest and weirdest uh, 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 cop-outs, you know, things that happened 50, uh, 50 years ago or more, uh, 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 there's been other people who have, uh, uh, for an example, uh, uh, Harvey Milk, he, he, uh, he killed uh, two, uh, two politicians, not one. Yeah, George Moscone, the mayor of San Francisco, and another politician. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, Dan, well, and Harvey Milk. It was Dan White is the one who got to walk free, yeah. Yeah, he uh, he killed two, and, uh, and I, I, it just, I, I can't uh, fathom why they're uh, playing football with Sirhan. You know, one, one time it's yes, one time it's no. Uh, like the DAs, one one DA says uh, yes, one DA says no. Governors, one time one governor says I don't have any trouble releasing him. Another governor comes up with uh, a whole bunch of Mickey Mouse excuses as, as as to not release him. The psychiatrists say he's his his his, his all of the psychiatrists since day one uh, say uh, say that Sirhan will not be uh, uh, a threat to society. Uh, there's been psychiatrists that have been fired because they've said that. If they, there's been uh, other psychiatrists. In fact, the latest psychiatrist uh, took uh, 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 tested tested Sirhan, uh, testified or, or wrote. He's a Harvard uh, uh, graduate. Uh, uh, Brown is his name. Dan, Dan Brown. Brown. Yeah, Dan Brown. Mm-hmm. Dan Brown. He uh, he mentions uh, that. Uh, he gave the the, the 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 results of Sirhan's uh, test to other psychiatrists, nameless, and uh, they said that uh, Sirhan is not a schizophrenic. Yet during the trial, all of the psychiatrists tried to, uh, you know, place Sir, uh, uh, say that Sirhan was a. Uh, this is under Cooper that Sirhan was a schizophrenic. So you know, uh, you have a lot of nays and a lot of yays, but. Uh, 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 the poor guy has been in there for 50, 55 years, sure. and you guys are using him as a political football for what? For what? You know, if he did, why not? Uh, you know, I hate to say it like this, but uh, the, uh, he's, he's been, he's, the poor guy's gone through hell. Yeah. The poor guy's gone through hell, and then, and then they tell him he's changing his story. He's not changing his story. The guy doesn't remember. And some, somebody comes up with, uh, with uh, you know, new evidence. Uh, somebody comes that different than anything that's different than the uh, police uh, version or the prosecution's version is uh, you know p- swept under the table. Well, you know why not uh, open? Why not give him a trial, a new trial? How long is it going to take? Hmm. You know, let's put this thing on the table and see what uh, what comes out of it instead of sticking to the same old, same old. There are some questions here. I'm telling you, even with the jurors at the Dennis trial that said that. Uh, 
if they had known these things, that they wouldn't have pleaded, that they wouldn't have uh, 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 come back with a guilty plea towards their hand. Mm-hmm. I think God bless him. He he passed away too. I haven't I haven't heard from him. Galindo. I think was his name. I haven't heard from him for a while. But uh, yeah, we we have all these things documented. If you you know if you uh, want to do some research on them, but uh, I don't think uh, Newt's and 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 even. Uh, 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 Bobby uh, 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 RFK uh, Senior uh, son uh, pleaded with uh, with uh, Newton. Mm-hmm. You know what more do you want? Right. Uh, the guy and the guy uh, is still being hard. What's he being so hard on? It, 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 he's he, you know it's all politics. Politics has got to be. Of course. It's got to. Yep. And we've caught him. I think even. Uh, Lisa has caught him in a couple of lies as well. Uh, yeah, the, his response was, I, I felt incredibly deceptive uh, why he vetoed it. And yeah, he was bringing up things that either didn't happen or there was a reason they happened. As you said, obviously, Sirhan didn't know he was innocent years ago. Now there's so much evidence that he really was innocent and couldn't have killed Robert Kennedy. And as I show in my book, couldn't have shot anybody because he was firing blanks in right. a hypnotic state. He was at the range firing at targets. There's no jury if they understood the evidence that would convict him today. And and Ray Newsom, I just want to add something. Governor Gavin Newsom, um, he was dis- he was missing for like two weeks before he wrote this, you know, rebuttal and said he was gonna. He already had signaled he was gonna veto it, which by the way is illegal. It's like he's really supposed to consider the evidence, but he'd already you know, made up his mind. He knew he was going to veto it. He just didn't know how he would explain it. And then he disappeared for two weeks. And it was supposedly right after he got a COVID shot. So people were speculating maybe he had an adverse reaction, was keeping that quiet. My own personal theory is he flew back to Langley to like, okay, you know, how do I defend this veto? Because there's really no reason to defend it. And these are my own appointees I'm overruling, you know, help me out. Because the way it was written was very cagey and avoided pretty much everything that was in my book that would have, you know, gotten Sirhan off the bat. Like all those topics were avoided and only other things not mentioned were in there. So some very sophisticated writing went on, you know, to explain that, to make it not easily rebuttal on day one when we heard it. You know, we had to kind of dig in to prove where he was wrong. As Sir Hans' current lawyer, Angela Berry, and, uh, you know, others are helping with that. Um, anyway, and when Bobby w- told me he was running for president, one of the reasons he wanted to run for president, he said, was that maybe he would have some power over Gavin Newsom and, and could, you know, ask him to release Sirhan. I think that's a fantasy because it's state versus federal and one does not have right. jurisdiction over the other. But Newsom is a problem. And if he runs for president, as a lot of people think he might, well, then there will be somebody else in, you know, who maybe won't reject Sirhan's next parole decision. We'll see. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, yeah. Munir, I've read, uh, I read an article where you said you you just like to give your brother a hug, and uh, boy, I, I hope I hope you're able to do that someday. Yeah, definitely. yeah. Thanks, thanks. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. I'll do to my eyesight. It's been a while, but you know, it, uh, my brother or not my brother. I mean, uh, more so because it's my brother. But you know, I I, I can imagine how many other people, you know, they're, they're uh, they're playing political football with, and that's that's not right. Let's find out. Uh, uh, you know, the closer you look at this thing, uh, the Sirhan case, uh, you walk away. Uh, they're just not satisfied. You're not satisfied with the uh, with the outcome. You, you you have so many lingering questions. I mean, this isn't a trick. You know, legal issue. To, you know, le- uh, outsmarting the legal uh, uh, system. I mean, there are some very legitimate points in in uh, Sirhan's case that don't make any sense, uh, according to the uh, uh, like you would ha- uh, like the district attorney or the LAPD would uh, like you to believe. There are a lot, a lot of things that uh, that, uh, especially regarding the ballistics. There's a whole slew of things that regarding the ballistics. I mean, they, they, 
that in itself should release their hand. But the Absolutely. And just, you know, reading, obviously, you know, reading Lisa's book, I think that explains every, everything you need to know is right there in, in those pages, uh, you know, and, and uh, it's just, it's such a travesty, such a travesty, what has happened. Yeah, yeah we need to know, we need to, you know, anybody who loves Bobby, uh, the uh, senior, should, uh, right. you know, should look into this thing and let, let's uh, find out what's what. Uh, you know, uh, God bless him, sir. He's getting old, and I, for one, would like to know, you know, if my brother killed him or not. I, I don't think he did. In fact, I know he didn't. Sure, I, I don't. I don't think that there's any doubt at this point. I mean, just there is based, no doubt. Yeah, based on the evidence. Yeah. Based on the, you know, again, what Lisa has uncovered and and written in her book. I, I just, I can't. You know, there's just nothing that that shows. No, there's no doubt. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, 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 at least I'm not putting you down. Oh, I know, but he hasn't read my book because he can't. <laughs> right. There's a lot of people other than, than Lisa that, that have uh, scrutinized, uh, you know, and read. And, they, they, uh, you know, they, their conclusions may be a little bit different than Lisa's. But they, too, are discombobulated or, you know, can't, uh, can't make heads or tails of a lot of the uh, things that were uh, done at that. I mean, these things are done. They're not rumors. They're they're not uh, fallacies. They're not. Uh, they're all there. They're all black and white. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're in the transcript. They're. Uh, uh, in fact, that's where uh, a lot of the stuff is uh, gotten from the transcript itself, the trial itself. I mean, we're not trying to uh, hoodwink anybody. If you follow up on the transcript, uh, you, you see how horror, what horror is really like. No, that, that was really, really a, a shame. The trial was a shamble, and all because of Cooper. He wanted to save his neck, and and he did it. He did it for a lousy thousand bucks. He did it. I, I think any other attorney uh, would have gotten uh, more than a slap on the on the wrist for doing what he did. That's a very serious crime that uh, that, uh, that he did. And then to come up to Syrian after everything was said, oh. <laughs> uh, our pride has been hurt. You, I could say so many, so many things. That I've well, <laughs> yeah, you're going to die, but oh, poor me. My pride has been hurt. Yeah. I'm not complaining. He's 10, ten foot away from the gas chamber, and these guys are worried about their pride. Unbelievable. And, and it, it, it's a way Sir Hand describes it. They were in unison. I mean, uh, it wasn't, you know, one guy crying. And then two minutes later, somebody else, it was, you know, like a chorus line. They were, they both uh, clicked in at the same time. I mean, it was, that was even staged. You know, like Sir Hans, uh, O'Reilly, is it O'Reilly, Lisa, or Riley? You know, O'Reilly, but I'm aware that he was involved in that, and I, but I don't question your knowledge on that fact. But uh, I, I just remember you telling me that Luke McKissick had coached hand exactly what to say and had promised him he would get parole if he said what Luke was telling him to say. And exactly. He did say it. Exactly. And then he would exactly. give him parole. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, sir has been... Oh, and another thing, that if I may leave you with this, if we're going to be saying goodbye, uh, Cooper, uh, after Shore uh, uh, disgraced his whole defense uh, uh, Cooper's defense uh, strategy said, "Oh, Sirhan will only do three months, uh, three years." Uh, wow. We all, the family, just looked at each other. Yeah. Wow, three years! Yeah. You know, uh, we, we we're gonna. Uh, he's only gonna get. Uh, I don't know manslaughter. Or, you know, yeah. lesser degree than first, uh, a lesser uh, sentence than uh, first degree murder. And uh, you know, we didn't believe him. But, you know, he, 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 it's the attorney of record. you got to go with whatever he says. And then Parsons has the audacity, the audacity, the SOB. Uh, I, I'm the youngest member of the family, and he knows I don't know anything about law. You know, I, I don't even know anything about a basketball or a football. You know I, what I mean? I'm just a happy-go-lucky, roly-poly, ignorant little little boy, you know, exploring life, 
And he tell, he and his wife, uh, Parson, and his wife apparently had uh, had uh, three or four places where they uh, they they place uh, they 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 dealt with uh, uh, people uh, that were mentally disabled. And uh, he took me to one of his places and said, "This is the wife and I own this, and this is the type of place that Sirhan would be it would be uh, would be in." Wow. You know, little uh, bungalows, uh, four or five bungalows on a lot. And uh, in other words, he's trying to tell us that, uh, you know, the sentence for Sirhan isn't going to be that harsh. Hmm. He, he and uh, Cooper both, you know, trying to. And then he goes up to my brother and says, uh, you know, our pride is hurt. No, no, no. They, they, oh. Those guys, uh, those guys, uh, both of them, both of them. And McGowan is... Uh, the, the, and then uh, Emil, Emil Zola Berman, the guy was, was a red-nosed drunk. He was a red-nosed drunk. In fact, he got reprimanded by the judge. Uh, he leaked out uh, uh, He leaked out some sort of a story that uh, after uh, the judge uh, had made an order for the the uh, anyone in the courtroom not to discuss anything with the press, uh, he decides to... Uh, you know, uh, uh, tell, tell uh, the Los Angeles Times, I believe the guy's name was uh, Dave Smith, uh, you know, the, the, the Sirhan, Sirhan's plans during the trial. And he, oh, another thing, the monies that they needed so bad, the, the, the defense team, uh, they they uh, gave part, part of it for uh, uh, a dinner, 500-plate dinner, uh, f- 500 people are, are, are close. I may have the number wrong, but uh, some great amount, uh, uh, a large number of people uh, honoring uh, Emil uh, Zola Berman for his works uh, and, and, and something or other. They took yes. that out of the Sirhan Fund and paid for it at the uh, oh, at wow. LA Pavilion. Wow. At the, Jeepers. At the, at the LA Pavilion. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah. This- Screwed over and over by their quote defense team, you know, yeah. for anybody well, to say there is a fair trial or you know representation, it's just talking through their, you know what. Well, I mean, you're, yeah. you 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 have our respects here, and in, in uh, you know what we we're absolutely convinced that your brother's innocent, and what what was done to your family is is really a disgrace, and uh, you know anybody who's read Lisa's book, and I've read it several times. I mean, it proves uh, 100% that, that your brother was innocent and, you know, who the guilty parties were. You know, I think Lisa does a really good job. And um, it's just been a disgrace. And, and uh, I'm sorry for everything that you and your family went through. And uh, thanks Thank for you. your time today. We really appreciate you coming on. Anytime, anytime, anytime. Thank you thank so you. much. Yeah, thank you. You're very privileged. And uh, I, I normally don't... Uh, uh, the, the only one time I was uh, talking freely was with uh, with uh, Shane Shane O'Sullivan. Uh, right. Lisa, if you could help me, Shane O'Sullivan. Uh, yeah, the, that's me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had no attorneys at the time, and uh, you know the guy seemed like he was earnest in his uh, quest. But uh, at least as the the second, the, I think uh, although we had our differences, the researcher for Sirhan. Uh, We've had a uh, you know a few uh, run-ins, but uh, Lisa, Lisa is the first one that uh, you know it's come out uh, a little more realistic than all of the others. I appreciate that from you. Thank you, thank you, uh, Lisa. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, sir. Any, anything right. else I can help? Let me know. I'll be more than happy to uh, follow up on anything that you might uh, you know that you, you're interested. Thank, thank you, you sir. Yeah, thank you, and thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, I'm glad we could all get together. <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks. Bye bye. Right. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. That's enough out of you. Podcast is executive produced and written by Bill Rader and Sean Kane and edited by Bill Rader. The That's Enough Out of You podcast and logo are exclusive property of Bags of Chicken, LLC. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or accounts of this podcast 
without the express written consent of Bags of Chicken, LLC, is prohibited. So don't even try it. <laughs>